investment thesis has not changed. It's buy gold, buy silver, get out of the dollar, invest in uh, foreign markets, emerging markets, overweight Asian economies. And one of these days, the Asian surplus nations that are accumulating dollars, that are producing all the products that they're basically giving to Americans on credit, they're going to stop pay playing that game anymore. They're not going to intervene. They're not going to prop up the dollar, and then the dollar is going to tank. And what's going on right now, Ben Bernanke knows that if he lets interest rates go up, which we have to do to have a recovery, the U.S. government is so indebted right now with, with short-term paper, and the, the, the banking system is so levered up, that if interest rates went up, the government would have to default on its debt, and all these big banks that we bailed out with the TARP are going to fail again. So in order to avoid that badly needed restructuring, all the Fed is doing is printing and printing and printing, but in the process, it's going to create an economic crisis far greater than anything that we experienced in 08 or anything that we would have experienced now had the Fed done the right thing because we're going to have a collapse in the value of the dollar, we're going to have a collapse in the bond market, and this whole U.S. economy creates is money out of thin air. It loans it to the government by buying bonds. The government then spends that newly created money into the economy, and that's what drives up prices. So the high cost of gasoline, the high cost of food, is just another federal tax. So when the president is saying he's not raising taxes on the poor or the middle class, he's not telling the truth because inflation hits the poor and the middle class. To get out of the way and let the free market function and stop interfering with all their regulations and all their deep structural problems underlying our economy because for years the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates artificially low to stimulate it. So we don't save enough, we don't produce enough, we borrow too much, we spend too much, the government is too big. All this is because we have this cheap money policy coming from the Fed. It's going to come to an end. When, when this thing collapses, it's going to be... All that money is coming back. And if people think food prices and gas prices are high now, wait another year or two because they're going to be prices, much, much interest higher. rates, which right. have to go Except up. That is but no price. one wants to let them go up because the banks will fail and the government will have to default on its obligations. But that's, those are the choices that the we have. The economy take. to restructure and rebalance. We need more savings. We need lower real estate prices. We need to have a solvent financial system. We need to balance the books. We need less government spending. We need to get rid of these trade deficits. We need some surpluses. We need some production. None of this is going to happen happen with 0% interest rates. All we're going to get is more speculation, more debt, more consumption, more air in the bubble, which means a lot more air comes out when it bursts. You know, if you think that Europe is going through a problem right now, you ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, Europe is the warm up. America is the main event. We are where the real sovereign debt crisis, currency crisis is going to develop. And it is going to be enormous uh, because of what the government has been doing. You know, it, it was going to happen anyway because of the mistakes that the government made in the past. But because they continue to compound those mistakes in the present, it's going to be that much worse. We're artificially happens. stimulating the economy with cheap money, more credit, and we're just trying to perpetuate a bubble economy instead of allowing a genuine economy uh, to be built. And so we're never going to have a real recovery. We're never going to create productive jobs until we understand the source of the problem. And that is too much government, too much regulation, too much money printing. We've had a free market economy in a long time. And, and we keep getting less and less free as the government continues to up the ante on, on its intervention. And the problem is the more the government gets involved in the economy, the more they screw it up. And the more they screw it up, uh, the more they get involved to try to solve the problems that they blame on the free market, but are actually a consequence of a lack of a free market and a direct a byproduct of, of government policy and government intervention. But in answer to your question, we're going to have an inflationary depression. I think that's the worst kind. It's going to be worse than what we had during the 1930s. And every day, the government only ensures that that depression is going to be that much deeper and last that much longer. And unfortunately, everything that the government is likely to do as a depression unfolds is going to exacerbate it and lengthen it. I mean, so we're not even close to having an understanding in Washington of what's causing the problem. And until we understand that, we're never going to solve it. We have to understand that the cure, the stimulus that the politicians always reach for is the reason we're so sick. And the more they stimulate the economy, the sicker it's going to get. Where more than 20 percent unemployment is. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we probably have an unemployment rate close to that right now. If you look at the U6, 
which is a better measure that the government puts out, which includes uh, people who are working part time who would rather work full time. You're looking at a number of about 15 percent. Uh, so, you know, we're not that much farther behind Greece. But remember, Greece is dealing with these problems right now. They have much higher interest rates. Our interest rates are still at rock bottom. You know, the last time we had a labor force participation rate this low in America was in December of uh, 1981, you know, when Paul Volcker was, you know, pushed, slamming on the brakes. We had 20 percent interest rates. Now we're, we're, we got the pedal to the metal. We got zero percent interest rates. We got QE and we still don't have any jobs. Imagine what's going to happen when the Fed has to put on the brakes. Well, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, do you foresee a situation in the U.S. in which it, it will get to that, in which we'll get to rioting and, and protesting in the street? Most likely. I mean, I think it's 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 going to get uh, pretty ugly here uh, when I think we have even more people unemployed, but we have escalating and maybe even skyrocketing prices for things like food and energy. You know, and if the government makes the mistake of putting in price controls, which you know I, I wouldn't put it past them, uh, and then we have shortages of energy and, and, and basic food products, uh, people aren't going to take too kindly to that. I mean, uh, they, they don't like austerity in Greece. Americans aren't going to like it here either, especially since I think we're going to get a bigger dose of it.